Hello everybody and welcome back for episode 9 of our High Elves campaign in 30 to the War Divide and Conquer version 4. First of all, I want to say thanks to everyone who commented on the previous video. I got a ton of comments. I tried to go through most of them. I did reply to a lot of them as well. Uh, but one thing specifically I want to address is of course the name for Goblin Town. In the last video I asked you guys for tips and advice. What shall we name Goblin Town after we capture it? Because it's not very much an elven name. So if it is in the hands of the High Elves, we want to give it more of an elvish name. And uh, the suggestion that got the most traction, it was um, suggested twice and also got the most likes, is Kirith, Fawn and Andrath, which means High Pass in Elven, in Sindarin, I guess. Uh, because it can put it up. apparently, Goblin Town used to be known as the High Pass of Imlardris, so it makes sense to call it High Pass in Elvish. I guess Kirith means pass then, because you also have Kiridongul uh, right over here behind Minas Morgul. Or Minas Ethel, depending on your perspective on life. Anyway, I think we did everything we wanted to do in the last turn, the last episode. Yeah, we even moved the fleet, so that does indeed a sign that we did everything we wanted to do. Okay, it seems like Donlan's uh, down to its last legs. If uh, Dunyard's full of troops, that usually means it's like a doomstag that spawned there. And the Enidwyth will siege them out, so that does make the Enidwyth kind of the big daddy of them all in that region. Which I'm not sure if that's good or bad. And otherwise, do seem to be siding with the good guys in this uh, this campaign, but we'll see what comes of it exactly. But yeah, I got a, a lot of great suggestions. Someone else also, uh, I think, two other suggestions. One was to call it Elbereth's Keep, which I think Elbereth is. I don't know. I know he's a very important person in Elvish lore, but I'm not sure if he was one of the Valor or Vismaya or the. I'm. I'm the, gonna stop talking. I'll probably get a comment explaining exactly who Elbereth is and I will be much wiser. I think that's all the comments about uh, the name suggestions. Ah, yeah, someone, is, um, someone also suggested Elderin Estalad, which means Elven Camp. That was also a good suggestion, but uh, it came a close second, I'm afraid. Alright, Kazanum West got the green exchange. So, is our culture good there, yes or no? Not yet, we could do some more culture, but I don't think I can build any culture buildings. No, I can. Okay, Berioth Tarion. Um, gosh, how's the culture looking? 26. Oh, this also increases tradable goods, which is actually very well, so I think we'll get that. Very good, not very well, very good. Brunost. Hmm. Let's wait, uh, let's get farms. Alright, our money is running low, so we should, of course, keep proceeding. And I think we should just fucking go for it. They'll get some reinforcements, but we, of course, have the Noldor troops. And the Region Smiths. Which I just uploaded a video explaining how strong exactly they are. The result was quite strong, but not strong enough to defeat Sauron in one-on-one -on -one battle. Okay, Oaks of Gunnabad and Woodland Realm. Hmm. The Oaks of Gunnabad are probably going to get their teeth kicked in then. Like, these shitty units, I'm not worried about. And if we do a knight battle, which I'm not sure if he's a knight fighter. I don't think the elves are particularly fond of knight fights. So, yeah. He's not. But okay. He does dislike them, so that's something. Uh, okay. Well, we can, of course, send more units over. We are getting the other inway soon. I guess we'll send these guys to Kamath Brin. They will be needed there. And then move the fleet down south even more. Alright, so Umbar should attack any moment now. We are very much ready for them. But uh, I think we might actually... I uh, got still a couple units here to defend in case the other way try anything. Do we have an extra ship ready to go? Do I need anything more? This guy is actually fairly cheap in upkeep, so I think I'll get another set of them. Just to have on standby. And quickly make sure that we are building everywhere, and then we can continue on. Uh, well, Oskalen can't build anything yet. It's too small. How's Austin Edel doing, actually? Austin Ethel, sorry. Austin Ethel. <laughs> Alright, so I think one more turn, or two more turns, and they should be at uh, the highest tier. Oh, uh, not the highest tier, but a tier higher. We can upgrade the settlement, and they will no longer look like an orcish encampment. So how have you guys been doing? I hope you've all been well, I hope you've all been healthy. Hope you've all washed your hands and touched your face as little as possible. It's kind of difficult. I remember when they just made the announcement, like, 
it wasn't a shutdown yet, but they were like, you got to wash your hands like 30 seconds. Like 30 seconds is a long time to wash your hands. And also avoid touching your face. Only then you start to realize just how often you touch your face. <laughs> For me, that was a eye opening. I was like, oh, what the fuck? Why do I touch my face so often? I always realize it too late. Like, God damn it, I'm touching my face again. For all kinds of bizarre reasons. Sometimes I sit at my desk and I just kind of rest my head on uh, my hand, which I guess is not that big of a deal. It's my forehead. It's not going to... I'm, kind of, I'm not going to get an infected forehead, but still, you only realize it. Oh, there's still some from coming north. Where would they be coming from? They're coming all the way around, we're just kind of straggling back there. If I assault, they do get the full brunt of their reinforcements. That is, we're looking at about 7,000 to 8,000 orcs. Interesting. Um, yeah, interesting. Let's send the Elder Inway over, shall we? Alright, the Vineyard in Buzradum. Well, let's just keep going. Increase, increasing the building income. Um, and on and a rod. Well, they do have the culture now, so we can get the Northern Barracks. We need to keep an eye on our economy, of course. Oh, we're not quite there yet. It's going down a bit. Uh, one thing that someone also suggested, but I think I'll uh, wait for now, is to purchase... What's it called? Perth Loon? Something like that? One of the settlements close by. I think it's over here. Uh, that settlement. Might do. Might do. Uh, but not now, because of course I am saving my money. But I imagine if we take Umba, then we will be looking a lot healthier economy-wise. Alright. Well, this is a siege of 11 turns, and of course, the longer we wait, the more depleted they are, but the reinforcements aren't, of course, we still have to face all of them. But it does seem that because of such a tight gap, they can only ever get two armies there to reinforce. That's still a lot of units we'll have to fight, but if we get the Elder Inver Oakwen, that is the strongest cavalry in the game, I think. The strongest one you can train. I think maybe Royal Swan Guard is a tad bit stronger, but you only get like 13 of them with Imrahil, and I think that's it. I don't think the Swan Knights are better than the Lancers, but correct me if I'm wrong. Of course, um, I could also do a comparison video of that. I do like making the comparison videos. Just quick, simple, short battles, just to answer the question, who the fuck's stronger between, you know, this guy and that guy? Okay, so they're moving some goblins behind me. Interesting, maybe I can attack them and then Goblin Town reinforces. Wait, what? Oh my god. The one rings in Goblin Town. They can have eight retinue. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, he has room. He has room to take the one ring. Imagine if we give Dornor Noston the smith the one ring. We can send him straight down to Baradur and <laughs> just destroy Mordo. Holy fuck, this opens up perspectives, my boys. Holy shit. We need to go for Goblin Town. Well, the ring does stay, I think, for about 15 turns. So we should be fine just waiting a little bit longer. But, oh my god, this is hype. I just want to save the game. <laughs> this is fucking hype, my boys. Alright, uh, we'll wait for the other Inway. I think maybe if I attack them with the other Inway, these guys are in force. And maybe Goblin Town, I think it's too far away. My god, that is hype, 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 hype. Alright, need to fix our economy badly. Um, economy, economy, economy. We are spending way too much money. We should also get free upkeep units. Um, Austin Ethel. Oh, so close. Well, let's get the uh, communal farms there. Um, we should definitely try to invest in free upkeep in Mythland, because we can only get this in the Axeman for free, but if we look 490, 490, 8, 840! Well, these guys are way too expensive to just sit here, I think. I think we don't need them here. We need them on the front line. So let's send them through Bree, which we are allied with. Do we have military access? Probably not. So they probably won't like me walking through. Ah, oh, we do have military access with Bree and with the Dunedain. So yeah, that should be fine. Okay. Keep sailing. I don't want to do it manual every time so they don't get blocked. 
Ah, they just got trained there. Or retrained, retrained. They got uh, the one tier below Calibrim body and plate. Which I guess we need to send them to Austin Aethel to get that upgrade, which is kind of annoying. But imagine that, we just get a big stack for Dornonoston with all elites. Send them with the ring to Austin Aethel. Get them all Calibrim body and plate and just send them on our little own fellowship down south. Man, that would be fucking hype. Imagine that. Giving the most OP general, just short of Sauron himself, the one ring. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm getting too excited for this. Because we're not there yet. We don't have it yet. Still a big army standing in our way. But my god, that would be absolute hype. That would excite me so fucking much. <laughs> sorry, okay. Stay calm, Izzy, stay calm. Don't let your nerves get the best of you. So what have you guys been doing to keep busy? I imagine most of you are, of course, into gaming. So I guess that's a, a logical choice. But uh, I'm sure there's other things you do. Maybe there's some some artists among you, or maybe some musicians. Maybe some of you are still working or studying. That's also an option. For me, it's been mostly working, um, making videos, of course. Ah, that's a very good building. It's very expensive, but... It is super useful, and I think it also boosts our economy nicely. We're now at 6-6, six, uh, six, six, basically. Okay, that seemingly did nothing for our economy. Yeah, well, it does give some, some bonuses. Free upkeep units, 4. We need that badly. Harland... Anything that gives us economy. Oh, free upkeep. We can get more free upkeep here. And then Austin Ethel is ready to be upgraded. So we will purchase that. Prioritize that. Make it a nice defendable settlement. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm not going to get attacked in Medio Tarun anytime soon. Alright, well, let's give this a try. If I attack Captain Lorm... Oh, that's actually better, because now they're closer to Goblin Town. Ah, they're not reinforcing. Smart. Alright, so a bunch of crap, which we are going to defeat by sending... Ideally, we'll send in Dornor Noston himself. Because, of course, he replenishes his troops, all the other ones don't. I would send in the other Inwe Roquen, but I don't want to lose any of them, you know? And I don't think I'll lose any to the infantry, but I might lose some to the war crossbows, because of course crossbows are armor-piercing. So, yeah, that kind of eliminates our uh, armor there. Look at them, oh, they look beautiful. So that's the Alderin with Roquen, the Alderin with Lances, and then we have the Tirno, which are a pike unit who are shoveling snow, it seems. Let's move them actually over here so we can take a better look at them. Beautiful. Look at those pikes. That's cool. The blade design at the top. Doesn't seem horribly effective for stabbing, seeing as it has a curved blade, but... Oh well, who am I to judge? Take a look at the stats. 10 for a pike unit, that is massive. And 27 defense. This guy's 13 attack, 13 charge, and 30 defense. Okay, so this is a messy fucking map. Um, like, where are they gonna spawn? I have no idea. Where are they? Oh, they're up here. Heavy Goblin Halberds. So let's send them back. Don't want to take any risks. Uh, we'll just send in Dornor Nostan when he spawns. The man, the myth, the legend. Apparently Dornor Nostan has a bit of a cult following in the Divide and Conquer uh, well, fan base. Ah, oh, we can also take a look at the Noldor troops in the meantime. Solely because of his hard to pronounce name. So here are the Noldor veterans, a two-handed shock infantry unit. They look absolutely spiffing. The Noldor defenders, just a regular old spear unit. Very nice. They can also use spear wall. And then we have the Noldor archers, who look absolutely amazing. And I'm pretty sure are also very competent in melee. Yeah, 11 melee attack and 20 total defense. Very cool. Right. No, 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 stop. Move, move, move. You should have been moving a long time ago. Any other units that I need to take a look at? I'm just looking at the bottom. No, we've seen all them in action. Maybe the Lindar Gods with an armor upgrade? Do they look any different? Not really. Some have a helmet. That's new. 
Do they scout with armor upgrades? Yep, they look slightly different. There's a couple of elves in there as well, which is cool. Or is that just the other units? Ah, that's just the other units standing in them. <laughs> uh, Linda Bowman with an armor upgrade, but I think we've seen them already. Anything else? Mm, that seems to be it. Alright, Smiths, go on. This battle is just clean up time, you know? I'd like to send in the Roquan. I'd love to see them in action. But I think that will be for the next battle, which will be huge as soon as it happens. But I will happily deplete Goblin Town as much as possible. Alright, so run in there. If we take care of the scouts, then we can take care of the heavy goblin halberds. Yeah, you can tell they already killed one just by uh, crossbows. That is, of course, our one weakness. Now we can charge them. Shouldn't lose anything in that rear charge. Oh, smashing. My god, that sound. That's me after eating McDonald's. Uh, so I did lose a couple of horses, it seems. I think I lost one. Ah, oh, well. Only half the enemy force I won't send them in anymore, just let the smiths take care of them. The smiths are getting their teeth kicked in, what the hell? Come on, man. Just to finish him off, there we go. It's time to press the ah, fuck it. Good enough. This is a clear victory. Lost two, Rookwin. That's sad, but okay. That's not that big of a deal. Oh yeah, someone also gave me an explanation on this scene, but I have to actually grab the comment there because I kind of forgot. But it, I thought it was Gondor or um, Dol Amroth, but it's not. It's actually elves who are fighting each other. Uh, hang on a second. Gosh. How do I find that comment? I've been getting a lot of comments. Uh, so what's Perth and Dune I have to purchase? Ah, whatever. Doesn't really matter too much, but it is indeed an elven civil war kind of situation. Which, that's one thing I've definitely learned from uh, talking with you guys about the lore. They're kind of blocked. I'll try to pull them back next turn. Uh, remove the boats. Nope. So now we are at Gondor. We are approaching. No, wait, we're not at Gondor. Yeah, we are at Gondor. At um, Thanagrondost. Right. I forgot to move my Roquin. Because we are actually permitted to travel through Breeland. Yeah, what was I saying? Uh, I've been keeping myself mostly busy with work, of course. Uh, making videos for YouTube. Playing some games in my own time as well. A lot of Minecraft, a lot of Bannerlord. Oh, my money is depleting fast. And also playing music. Now, at one point, this was a music channel where I uploaded videos of me playing guitar or bass guitar. I haven't done that in a while, but I've still been playing. Not as much as I should have been, and I have kind of been lacking in the the progress, but I do still play. I might put up a couple videos here and there, depending on when time permits it. I actually snapped a string on my guitar. Well, a couple of guitars at least, but uh snapped a string on one of my guitars yesterday or was it two days ago which hadn't happened in years oh, they're still besieging mistrand come on dale get it over with get to the front line as fast as possible horses can i move you now yeah, i can okay there we go eight more turns i'm just mostly worried about these lads all right Economy, economy, economy. Farms in Brunost. No, uh, not looking great. But looking better, we're losing less. Um, can't really get anything here that doesn't cost me money. Guess we'll get uh, nothing for now. Just let Brunost grow a bit. They're also fairly close to being upgraded. I guess I can uh, raise the tax rate in some places. We have kept it low in a lot of places. Uh, I guess I can raise it in Mythlons. Hmm, actually no, I'd rather have the, the growth. If 
for now. Okay. Ships pass the Bay of Tharagrondos, I imagine it will be called. Ah, oh, they can't go over the open seas. That's odd, we should be able to go over open seas, we're elves. And you go here. Retrain and enjoy the free upkeep which we desperately need in more settlements, specifically Mythland. Just waiting for the, the Umbar invasion to happen. Once that happens, we can kind of lax a bit, slow down a bit in Mythland. We don't need that many troops ready. Alright. I'm just worried not so much about the garrison in Goblin Town itself. I do imagine they got defenders as well if I attack them. But of course, the reinforcements. One thing I could do, I guess, is attack them on the last turn of the siege and try to finish off the siege, capture the settlement before the reinforcements arrive, or try to fight off the reinforcements one by one. They should spawn on the other side, but I don't know what the, the settlement looks like. I don't know what kind of battle map we're dealing with. That's quite important in that case, because I could be able to just rush in, take the settlement, and then uh, lock them outside, I guess. The faction will still be alive, because they're fairly sure they have Mithelberg. Oh my god. But we'll see uh, what happens then. Alright, economy slowly getting back up. Kazadum West. Do we have mines there? We do. There's probably some orcish buildings I can get rid of that don't do anything for me. Well, these all do something for me. Bra Brawler's Pit. My god, that is loud. Puzradum. Get the leather tanner, that brings in money. Anon and Arad. Um, gosh. Ooh, we can get Noldor troops here as well. Uh, we can get the Elder Inui wherever we can get Noldors. Nice. Very nice. Um, let's see. Let's get the Hall of Music, I guess. Get ready for the free upkeep. Any uh, other buildings I can destroy here as well? Brawler's Pit. Oh, doesn't seem like it. And then Beriotarion. Is there a Brawler's Pit here I can get rid of? No. Settlements are getting richer, of course, but still have a fair bit ahead of us to make our money. Um, what about Brunost? A Grog Hut? No, that actually gives me bonuses. Brothers, pick. There we go. That is so loud, you have no idea. It's even louder for me because I play at a high. I do always lower the volume when I upload a video because this game can get loud, man. Nothing I can really do. Ah, oh, actually, Brawler's Pit. Just kind of trying to keep our economy somewhat stable. Can I go on open seas, yes or no? The game doesn't want me to. Hang on. Does it say anything here? No. Because I don't want to suffer attrition. Let's just go around. We have, we have time. We have time. Alright. You all get free upkeep. Mython, is that almost done with the, the building? Three more turns. Desperately need build, uh, free upkeep here. Already get rid of a... Uh, I don't know. Give me an extra thousand or something. Okay, I should move those probably manually as well. Because they might get blocked up on whatever. Someone pointed out that Breland is a Teutonic faction and not a regular old family tree faction. So whenever they do die down, which often happens in my campaigns, the faction just dies, it's because the faction leader and the faction heir are killed in the same battle. It's kind of a bug in Medieval 2. For Teutonic factions, if you lose both the faction heir and faction leader in the same battle, or in the same turn perhaps, I think it's the same battle, then um, the faction just dies. Just disappears. Because I can't figure out how to do the line of progression, I guess. If faction leader dies, it goes to the faction heir, but if the faction as is non-existent, the game's like, well, guess that faction's done then, I guess. Just kind of disappear, bloop. Like Thanos snaps his fingers, boom. They're done. Great movies, by the way. If you haven't seen The Avengers, fucking great movies. It's what Star Wars should have been. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna start talking about the, the last Star Wars movies, because <laughs> this will be a video of like five hours. No one's looking forward to that. Spending money like it's coming out of my butthole. Alright. I wish money came out of my butthole. Can you imagine that? Every time you go to the loo, you get richer. Ah, this blast of troops is still there. 
These guys are getting horribly depleted. I guess I should keep an eye up north. Just to see if there are any... I should try to send you around so we can take a look at Mithelberg. Okay, didn't I reclaim Nogfarekla? I guess that's to that war with uh, Agmar. Yep, they are. Interesting. Interesting. They can take care of Angmar for me. I might just get Glorfin though without having to do anything for it. I'm quite curious to know what uh, bodyguard unit Glorfin though will have. Imagine Noldor or something? I don't think he'll just have Kalakwendi Lords. He's a bit too badass for that. Maybe he gets Lancers? That'd be cool. I was actually watching a video yesterday on Middle Earth lore, or I think the video channel is called Lore of Middle Earth, something like that. And it was about what if uh, Lord Elrond, Galadriel... No, it wasn't what if. It was why didn't Glorfindel, Lord Elrond, and Lady Galadriel not join the Fellowship? I basically talked about how fucking awesome Glorfindel is. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, it was originally Tolkien's idea to include Glorfindel in the Fellowship. But I guess because he was so badass, he would kind of minimize everyone else's efforts. No one could compare to him. He'd single-handedly crush... The Urukai invasion of uh, Elm's Deep, for example. Alright. Okay, Mlar just got a couple buildings done. Well, Proportation. Harlan got the Hall of Culture, so that's also free upkeep. So we'll get rid of the Linda Bowman. We'll still have plenty of troops there, but Eftarion also got a level worker done, so that's extra building. So right now we're running a bit of a loss, but I think, especially once this building is done, we'll make up for it. So we actually went through a lot of our money, but it's kind of kicking back in. We are, of course, feeling two big armies, which, as the elves, is uh, not something to take for granted. And of course, once we take Umba, I do imagine that will greatly boost our economy. So there's nothing else I can really do. Yeah, the Anadwaith are really doing a, a good campaign. Nice, good for them. Um, so I just keep waiting, five more turns. Keep waiting, waiting, waiting. Oh, I forgot to move my spies. That's okay. So Mount Graham is indeed a new settlement. I had a look at my Dorguldur campaign, which is still in version 3, and it was not there. There were some other territories, I think Angsu... No, Angsu is more north. There were other territories in the neighborhood, but uh, Mount Graham, if I'm not mistaken, that it's called, uh, is indeed a new settlement, which is quite nicely located. It's very uh, tactical positioning. I mean, it's not if you have to go around, it's not like you have to go around very far, but it is in a bit of a, a tactical advantage. And I think when you're playing as Angmar, it makes it easier to rush Buzradum, for example. I would be very interested in doing an Angmar campaign, I've said it countless times, but we'll see what happens once the Dol Guldur campaign is done and we'll start a new evil campaign. Perhaps I'll do another vote, another poll, we'll see, we'll see about that. That's all in the future, and of course we are now kind of running break even, but now we have finished normally, oh Bruno's ready to upgrade, can't afford it right now, but we have upgraded Austin Ethel, and we have, there it is, ah oh, it looks nice now. Uh, of Council Hall in Mithlon, so that should, of course, give me more free upkeep. Yep, Cinder Archers are now free upkeep as well, so that should boost our budget a little bit. Not on what also Hall of Music, so it should also have... Ah, the Ballista is free, nice. Has it in West got the market as well, so our economy should start flourishing a little bit more again. Slowly but surely. The thing is, we are not wildly spending money, we are, of course, spending it on armies. That will give us an ROE, a return on investment. In a couple turns. It will the Lancers reach us in time? I don't think they will actually. Four turns? No. I doubt they will. But they will still be useful in the next battles to come. Anything we need to know about? Oh, we got a new general. Torhas Dorian. Well, I think that's one settlement that doesn't have a general. A non and rot. A governor, I should say. So you can move to... Actually, you get free upkeep here. Which you probably don't get in the non and a rod. I don't know, you do. Although probably not, because I can't train Kalakwendi Lords there. Ah oh, well. How expensive is your upkeep anyway? Not that expensive, I imagine. 310. Not nothing, not nothing. So at 9000 gets another upgrade. Alright. 
All right, all in all, things are looking pretty good. We are almost at the 100 turn mark. If we can take Goblin Town by then and control the One Ring, I would consider that a resounding success. And then we should definitely prepare to just walk straight up to Baradur, I think. Just get rid of Mordor. That would kind of completely shift the balance of everything. Like, Gondor would suddenly lose their main big enemy. They can focus on Harad and the other nine, which we're also taking care of. So Gondor suddenly becomes very strong because they don't have any real enemies that can contest them. They can probably start helping Rohan deal with Isengard, and Isengard's already not doing that well. So that could suddenly snap, boom, like that, make the campaign, our campaign, a whole lot easier to achieve our specific victory conditions simply by boosting our allies. So that would, of course, be an interesting situation. Yolstow, another new settlement. Alright, so economy, uh, just kind of hanging in there. Slowly but surely. Oh, Goblins of Moria, <laughs> they're not having a good time. Uh, I don't care very much about Maethelberg, they can have it if they want. They should move these armies down south to deal with Lothlorien, of course. Don't worry about me, I won't successfully take Goblin Town, you crazy. Okay, they all get free upkeep. Mm, I should probably send these guys north to Imladris. In our guards. Because I think you'll get more free upkeep in Imladris. Sorry. Um, I don't know, West Mines are not that great. Oh well. Uh, move the ship and then move the Roquen. Slowly but surely, we are approaching Umba. I could, of course, I think I'll just land here. That will be a lot quicker than going around the bay. Um, and then the Roquen, where are you? You are here. So you will need one, two. Uh, you, you might actually get there with one turn to spare. I'm surprised they're not attacking me. I would have definitely thought they'd attack me. So if they do sally out and they do get reinforced, I think I will try that strategy. They will be very depleted. They won't get their defenders. I think we can just bum rush the town hall and then they'll have to attack us. We can defend. Life is easier that way. Oh! Goblin Town's done. They're rebels. They lost their... Uh, I don't know, they lost their faction general and faction, uh, faction leader and faction heir, I guess. Maethelberg got captured, probably. Huh. So, uh, yeah, that's the Goblins of Moria done with. <laughs> Alright. I wish it was us that dealt a killing blow, of course, but... Hey, I welcome, uh, I welcome their death. Very much so. So that makes it interesting. It seems they're buggering off, or... Ah, ha, 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 ha. Rumors have spread from the coast of Middle-earth of a large fleet of black-sailed warships heading much farther north than ever seen in the Third Age. Many have guessed that this can only mean that the Corsairs seek to claim the second greatest port on our shores, Mithlond. Yep, the mountain orcs are done. So, Umba, where is your fleet? It's funny that they mention that. So they mentioned they want to take the second greatest port, they're launching the most ships they've ever seen, and meanwhile we're doing the exact opposite. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello there! I cannot disembark anywhere here. Yes, really? Nowhere? Nowhere? Ah, all the way over here. Oh, I guess we're going round then. Alright, I guess we're going round. Makes sense. Oh, they're gonna be so, so surprised. They're gonna be like, what? No, wait, huh? Oh, suddenly they got trolls, are you kidding me? Fucking hell. Well, at least they won't get reinforcements again. Uh, suddenly they get, like, great units. Azog's Defiler, that's one of the strongest cavalry units in the game. Seriously, 13 attack, 14 charge. Their defense is low, but their attack is insane. Oh, the rest is just fighters and looters. I guess we'll wait them out. I mean, we do have plenty to take care of with the trolls, but the trolls can do a lot of damage. And I also wonder, what happens with the One Ring? Is it still just in rebel hands, then? Well, I guess we'll find out in two turns. Alright. It's a lot of exciting shit about to unfold. A lot of exciting shit. The capture of Goblin Town, the taking of the Ring, 
the siege of Umbar are about to start all in one episode. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I've been busy, haven't I? <laughs> ah, I do try to make my videos entertaining. I know I'm doing to uh, the pitch perfect place. But my god, do I do stupid shit that sometimes works out greatly. <laughs> Hello, don't attack me please. Okay, that's a diplomat. I can't really tell because you have your bald head stuck in a mountain. Which I kind of appreciate the way they made the settlements like that, with the path under the mountain. That's some great detail. Whoever came up with that idea deserves a raise. And I'm also glad they made it two settlements. I don't know, it just kind of adds to the the vibe. Otherwise, Casa Doom, like such a great realm, such a dwarven realm is just like one mountain. It's kind of sad if you compare it to the Blue Mountains or the Edabord. The Iron Hills, I guess. Oh, that might be a completely different mountain range. I'm not sure. Someone will correct me, of course. Of course. Alright, come on, boys. One more turn and we can capture Goblin Town. Promptly rename it. I'm not gonna build that, I think. Actually, I'm gonna build it, but that's, again, most of my money that I was so desperately saving up for. Gone. Alright, so they have no more reinforcement. The trolls are depleting rapidly, so we'll, we'll just wait one more turn. Kamath Brin, I could have also sent that new general up north. Um, anyway, construction complete of farms in Austin Ethel, very nice. Do we have any sight of the Umbar fleet yet? Because I would of course like to crush them on open seas. Remember those uh, naval battles in... I think it was... yeah, it was Room 2 and Shogun as well. No, no, it was mostly Room 2, where you could attack transport ships. If an, uh, an army sailed with a fleet, did get transport ships, all the troops were on a very weak ship. And a legit strategy was just to get crappy ships with battering rams at the front, just to ram into um, transport ships and completely sing them and destroy complete armies like that. You can have like super shitty units, just a couple of ships just ramming away, never allowing them to board, always ram them and their ship would sink in like one hit. That was so satisfying. Man, Casa Doom, you always give me mini heart attacks. What the fuck? If they attack Casa Doom West, I will cry. I have so much other shit to worry about right now. Casa Doom, we can be allies in this. I can defeat Mordor for everyone. I can do what Isildur failed to do. Dornor Noston can be uh, our hero here. Don't even need Glorfindel. I would have thought it would be Glorfindel who would take the ring, but... If it is Dorno Nostan and we have to send him south, so be it. I don't think there's any man better fit for the job than him. Except maybe Elrond. Alright, so they are selling out Goblin Town. They still have four trolls, well, 12 trolls in total, so that's roughly one unit. We should be able to crush them, but of course we'd like to see it on the battlefield. This is the first time we're seeing a full High Elven stack. And battle in action. And it's not even a fully, it's not our strongest stack we'll ever get because it still has some early tier units in there. But it is a full stack that does feature some of our elites. Uh, what the hell is this? Let's just quickly take a look. Okay, pretty cool settlement. Cool settlement. Let's take a look around. Tents and shit. Alright, cool. Uh, let's set up a somewhat decent position. Um, gosh, how do we go about this? I'm mostly worried about the trolls, of course. So let's get our archers in formation. They will have to take care of the trolls. Let's put the smiths also in front. They are, of course, the elite. Uh, then the rangers will move there to provide suppressing fire. We'll have the pikes close to Mr... Tornor Noston. Infantry close behind. Just fill up the ranks. And then, of course, the Lancer Cavalry on the other flank. Oh, there's one more. That's a lot of Lancers. Alright, I think that's a suitable position. Nice. Just look at this. Ah, oh, beautiful. The cavalry coming in shot. Kind of reminds me of the Battle of Daggerland. It's just the dark 
brown lands. Well, not really brown. Black lands. No dual defenders. Imagine if our actual defenders, like the garrison unit, was like that. Ah, oh, look at them. They look so fucking good with their shields there. The sword masters behind them. Ah, oh, beautiful. Sorry. I'm getting slightly turned on. That's of course personal information, which you should not tell your friends. Don't tell me... Nothing. <laughs> Never mind, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna continue on that path. Okay, they're getting destroyed. But it is mostly the trolls we have to worry about. Seems they're bugging out a little bit. Which is good. Well, I can just wait. I want to minimize my losses, of course, seeing as this will be the Fellowship. Orc fighters. They're not doing a lot of fighting, they're doing a lot of dying. Should have called them Orc Dyers. Sorry. <laughs> orc Dyers, imagine that. Imagine if they're like Orc Suicide Bombers or something like that. They kind of had the Suicide Bomber in the Isengard, I guess. That one guy of Helm's Deep. Legolas! That guy. That Legolas failed to shoot. He's like an amazing archer. Doesn't miss a single shot, but then that one shot... Actually, no, he hit him a couple times. That's true. Actually, never mind. Never mind. I'm talking bullshit. He never missed. I think he all he hit all his shots. He just didn't die. I guess he could have aimed for the head better or something. I don't know. Well, I think actually I'm gonna tell my archers to stop firing because we want to save our ammo for the trolls. So we're gonna send in our smiths and hopefully lure out the trolls. They're just kind of pacing back and forth. Hopefully kill them. Nice. Let them take care of everything. They could probably also take care of the trolls, but it might be a bit too risky. Go, go, go! Smack, smack, smack. What a beatdown. Hello, trolls! Don't you want to play? Come on, boys. I know you want to play. Sending on all the archers. Look at them. Beautiful. The red capes just finish it. This makes the whole thing so so sexy. Nice, Captain Down. Okay, trolls are coming in. I don't know, can they beat trolls? Should be able to. Hmm, I'm gonna pull them back. I am going to pull them out of there. Pikes, you better get ready. Those trolls are a bit too tough for me. Cavalry. Okay, trolls are down. Good job, archers. Mm hmm. Come on, you cowards. Don't wanna waste troops necessarily. I only wanna spend the absolute minimum. I should get some crossbows. Can you imagine elves with crossbows? I can't. Let's send in our archers one by one. <laughs> it's kind of silly, but just don't want to risk anything. Especially if we're going to do it too, but I'll do it with this army. Alright, they're out of ammo. 
I don't know. It's, I should send in the smiths because they of course replenish, but I don't know if they're strong enough to deal with them. Alright, kill them. Okay, Rupena here. Got the Lancers. I'm on your riders. Nice, that did a lot of damage. A charge is, I think, armor piercing. Should be. Can't imagine getting a spear at that speed would not pierce your armor. Alright, we are crushing the trolls now. And then our smiths can finish this off. Capture Goblin Town. Take the run ring. I hope it doesn't bug out because of uh, it being a rebel settlement now. Come on, kill the troll. Just hit him. Oh, there we go. Let me grab my phone real quick, because I already forgot the name, of course, of the new settlement. Um, what was it again? Kirith, Fawn, and Andrath. I hope I don't mistype it, and I hope it's not too long, but I don't think it is. There are some long names in this game already, so... Shut up, be a problem. Goblin Town is now Elven Town, goddammit. And I do hope it doesn't bug out with the One Ring, but I think it's possible for the One Ring to be in Rebel Settlement, so... Hopefully it doesn't bug out. And then we'll see, of course, what we shall do. But uh, I, I don't think it's going to be our intention to hold on to the One Ring, because I think it actually gives more negative effects than positive effects. But, um, yeah, we will just sally together an army and march south, I guess. Straight through Moranon. Uh... Well, actually, I don't know what to do. I guess I'll sack it. So, what now? Yes, I will take you, actually, because we're going to need... Can't do him on the siege. Oh, that's good. Uh, where are you? Because I want a governor in Kamath Bryn. Oh, I hope you're not all the way on the other side at Mythlond. You are, aren't you? Ah, oh, damn it. All right, well, you're walking all the way across. One to Goblin Town. And the other to... What's the name again? It looks cool. Kamath Bryn. Alright. So. Uh, we should get the ring next turn if the script works out. Kirith. Born. And Andrath. High pass. Did I type it right? They put like uh, dashes in between there, Ost in Etil, so I guess I should do that too, otherwise it will look kind of off. Uh, Kirith Fawn, can I like, there we go, Kirith Fawn, I guess Kirith Fawn is like two words, so that can be like that. Right, right, seems good, seems good, very cool, cooler than Goblin Town for sure. Alright, nice. To get some mines as well from here, plus 800, that's actually a very rich settlement already. So it doesn't need the Anduin Veil that holds on to uh, this land here. I guess logically speaking, we will wait what the ring does. But if the ring script doesn't activate and we're not going down south to Baradur, we should just move straight on to Angmar. We're safe here now. Oh, there's still this army, but I think they'll go fight the Anduin Veil. But now we are of course also having our little D-Day moment at Umba. Hello there! <laughs> oh my god, this is scary, man. It's proper scary. Have the uh, Black Numenorians arrived here already? No, they have not. Alright. Well, we do have some money this time, so we can probably afford the upgrade here. Let's see if we can get more economic buildings. Don't want to invest in uh, non economic buildings for now, do want to stick to the economy. Because by God, we need to start making back money. Does that give any economy? No. Nope. Uh, no, no, no. And then over here, we'll start with culture, I guess. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Seems good. 
Is there anything I can destroy that? Probably. Probably like a brawler's pit. Brawler's hall even. Ah, oh, that gives me a thousand. And also permanent hearing damage. So that's amazing. Any more economic buildings here? Yes, farms. Farms? No farms. Sad. Uh, well, okay, well, that'll be all for that. Well, let's see if we get the one ring now. Oh, I should have checked again if we had enough place in our retinue, but I don't think our retinue expanded. Maybe we got like a banner or something, something we don't need. All right. So that's Goblin Town taken care of. As you can see on the map, it's turning more and more blue. Uh, Gon what? Uh, Gondor? What are you doing in Casa Doom? Don't tell me you got like a diplomat stuck between <laughs> both Casa Dooms. Oh god. That wouldn't be entirely impossible knowing this game sometimes. Diplomats do the darnest things. I'm very happy they limited diplomat recruitment because the AI could sometimes spam you with diplomats. It was sometimes very annoying. You could spend more time watching diplomats perform their actions instead of actually playing the game. But alright, so we have taken Goblin Town, we have landed in Umba lands, we are approaching our naval invasion, so a lot of shit's going down. Suddenly. Episode was a bit slow at the beginning, but now we are whew, marching forward. Do we have the One Ring now? The One Ring has been found. So that should be us, right? Mount Gundabad besieged, and now we should get a pop-up that we have the one. This is the first time I'll get the One Ring. My lord, you have acquired the Great Ring of Power. Yes! Oh, yes! The One Ring bestows immense power upon those with the will strong enough to make use of it, but it also carries ruin and great danger with The White Council will hopefully offer some guidance to us soon. Oh, so we should just hold on for it now. So, Dornor Noston, Conqueror of Goblin Town, and Wielder of the One Ring. Plus 5 Authority, plus 3 Dread, Ooh. plus 3 Command, plus 2 Public Health, plus 5 Hit Points, holy shit. Minus 1 Loyalty, minus 3 Acumen. Why does it reduce my my acumen? Anyway, only the fire shows it. Oh, I'm not gonna read that. In uh, what language is that? I guess it's black speech. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all and in the darkness bind them. Nice. Yes. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so fucking stoked. Well, I know what to do with it. We need to get an army together and just fucking go to Mordor. I guess we should bring a ship so we can sail all the way here. Actually, we can't really get it. I think walking would be the fastest. We could just kind of take the path of the Fellowship, except we don't go through Moria and go all the way here. Uh, which was originally the plan, I guess. Okay, what were we doing? Alright, Umba. Hello! Where is Umba? Let me just toggle the fog of war real quick, because I have no idea where the settlement itself is. Ah, oh, it's over there. God damn it, I landed on the wrong side. You know what, guys? We can attack this army, and Umba might just sally out, and we could take the settlement in one go. I'm actually gonna save first. <laughs> you never know what happens. They will, of course, get a Doomstack. Have they landed here yet? No, no sign of them. I imagine they don't actually show up with ships. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm uh, fucking sweating. Alright, so they do just straight up attack us. With the reinforcements, if we kill Argimilkart, which is our faction leader, in one go, we can of course now also see the uh, the new Umba, well, Aradunai troops in action, like the Azrazir crossbows. And uh, what do we have here? Halberdiers, marines, oh, halberdiers, bane of my existence. Footmen, bowmen, very nice, that's a new unit. The warriors, I think they used to be called savages, I think the warriors used to be the sword and board unit. And the, the savages were the, the ones with the axes. And then some archers which won't change at all. So yeah, we can crush them. Easily. We don't have any cavalry. That's a bit of a lot of time. But neither do they. I don't think Gimelkart has cavalry. No, he has not another royal guard. Let's fucking do this, boys. Let's capture Umbar and kill our Gimelkart. What a fucking episode. Take Goblin Town. Take the One Ring. Take Umbar. We're all over the place. Literally. My god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Alright. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Let's take a look at how we're gonna fucking deal with this. Let's first take a look at our new units. We have Sindar Archers. Do they look better than Noldor ones? 
Well, in my opinion, they actually do. A little bit more simplistic, which I appreciate. The Sindar Spearmen. I do think they have lower stats, but they are still quite strong. Alright, very cool. I like the curved blades there. Sindar Axemen. I like that they're using axes and not swords. Kind of sets them apart a little bit more. Very cool. 1120. That's pretty low, actually. The Spearmen have a higher attack. But these guys are armor-piercing. Oh, okay. Very nice. So we'll probably send them in against... Uh, oh, we'll send the Mithon Nobles in against Argimal card. Yes. Have we seen the Mariners in action, actually? I don't think we have. Uh, they look pretty neat. I'm not sure how much we'll use them. I'm not too fond of Javelin units most of the time. Oops. Pressing all the wrong buttons. Uh... Hang on one second, I need to actually do something real quick. Alright. Mm, Alright, so we put the archers in a broad line. They will be our front defense. Then we'll get the mariners behind them. They will have to do a lot of damage. Then we will get the Sindar guard as well as the Sindar spearmen in the middle. Our uh, main line with, of course, the Kalaquendi Lords providing moral support. And the Mithon Noble will be a flanking squad as well as the Sindar Axemen. I think that's a good setup. Let's take a look. Just appreciate the beauty of a full elven stack capturing Umba at like turn 90. Alright, let's take a look at the new other name troops. So we have the Warriors here, which used to be the Savages. They're pretty cool. Nothing too special about them. They do look better than they used to look. Much more high detailed. We have the Spearmen over here. Very Roman inspired, you can tell. The uh, Mariners. I like the little fins on their helmets. Very cool. The Halberdiers. Okay. Neat. Uh, and then the Bowmen over here. Here are the reinforcements, which should not be too much. Okay, the Azrazir, as we know them, nothing new there, more Azrazir, but then, then, the granddaddy of them all, the Naru Naru Royal Guard, the only time you will see these guys in action. There they are, oh, very cool. You can definitely see the Numenorean uh, inspiration there. This guy's looking way too fancy, look at him, he's all golden. That's kind of gaudy. <laughs> he looks like a, I don't know, like a wrestler entering the arena. Make sure these guys are not on skirmish mode. Oh, these guys can't even be on skirmish mode. So we'll actually let them team up real quick. Uh, and let's assemble our troops. Move a little closer. I imagine our Cinder archers have good range. Let's actually take a look at their range. It is 190. And these guys have one... Doesn't actually say. Hmm, nobody says it. 170, I guess I didn't scroll down far enough. Yep, there we go. So they do have slightly better range. Be quick about it. Okay, we are in range. These guys are firing on... Oh, those are the archers are getting absolutely destroyed. That's sort of humiliating for them. You can fight on the Royal Guard already. You should not have to get too close. There we go. Nook! And fucking loose. There we go. Firing in that flank. <laughs> it's almost like they're wearing a... I think they're wearing a mask. Yeah, they're wearing a mask. They are wearing masks. Cool. And they kind of seem to wield the same weaponry as the Minas Lethal Guardians used to have. Of course, they're now a two-handed unit. Alright, well, if we can pepper them a bit, weaken them up a bit, I don't mind that one bit. The archers are getting destroyed, as you can tell. They are wasting most of our ammo on them. Which I think I'd rather not do. I think I'd rather send them to start fighting on these lads. You can keep firing on them, I guess. Yeah. 
Now we're just moving forward. We'll pull them back in time. We don't have cavalry to uh, worry about. You fire on them for a second, because they will probably die really quickly. Those guys are a little bit too tanky. But of course, sheer volume of arrows, elven arrows at that, should just crush him fairly easily. Alright. Let's take a look. I think the savages are dying pretty soon. Oh, sending in his crossbows. Those are, of course, fairly lethal. They will do a ton of damage, so we should probably focus on them for a little bit. At least deplete our numbers. So they are armor piercing, of course. Are still hitting them, of course, as well. These guys are armor piercing, I'm fairly certain of. Alright, well, we've depleted a lot of them already. Okay, wait, whoop! Let's quickly pause there, because they are suddenly rushing forward. Uh, let's move back the archers. Travelins, get yourselves ready. There we go! I wonder how much damage those javelins will do. I'm usually not a big fan of javelins. Sending his own javelins, oh, we can directly compare them. That didn't do a whole lot. Oh, it actually did, it's just a bit delayed. Okay, my javelins are way better. Missile damage, 10. 8, wait, mm -hmm. that, uh, that javelin should do a whole lot more damage, but it doesn't seem like they do. Uh, of course, they're getting hammered by both sides. Uh, send forward our troops in our spearmen as well. And then the lords. Join in, Mython nobles, get your asses ready. The axemen as well. Keep fighting. Shouldn't be too difficult. Oh, so the halberdiers will be annoying. Nice. Javelin's doing quite a bit of damage. Do need to be careful, friendly fire force. I'm sending in his royal guard to face my axemen, which is fine. They are armor piercing. I don't think these are. No, they're not. So our great armor should uphold a little bit. We are going to suffer casualties, of course. It will be unavoidable. But if we can minimize those casualties, that would be great. Ah, oh, Gimel Card, your time has come. You wanted to take my port, but I will take your port. Life's a bitch, motherfucker. So we should just overwhelm them with superior strength. Zero God are strong, but if we surround them. Give our axemen more room to attack, we should be fine. These guys are falling. Only half the enemy force nice, we just outclass him on every fucking aspect. Nice, he's already dead, Gimel Card. No doubt your troops will run away now. I mean, the real guard won't, because they're fucking badass. They probably have locked morale as well. Yep. Well, let's send in the marines, because they actually do a fair bit of damage in melee as well. Ah, and the captain as well. The general actually died before the captain. My micro could have been better, but... Well... Can't argue with a clean win, right? Nice. 
Yeah. If I had some cavalry here, this would make my life a whole lot easier, but sadly I do not have cavalry. Nor could I get cavalry at the time of making this army. Alright, well, everyone can be uh, of god mode. Alright, run them down. You guys should be plenty fast enough. Stop throwing. Oh, they're using double axes? Ah, uh, some are using double swords. It's a combination of dual wields, which is quite cool. Alright. That's the royal go to deal with. Well, crushing them with little uh, losses, actually. 13%, that's nothing. The boomin' are fighting back. They'll quickly regret that. Yeah, they can't stand against the mariners. So these mariners are very strong, not letting me down at all. How our foe it's it's done, mate, it's done. Umba is ours, holy fuck. What a resounding success. How far are we? 92, that is fine. And it's Argimor card which you completely crushed. Let's take a look at who did the most damage. So most losses were with the Axemen, which of course they faced Argimor card himself. The Spearmen also couple of casualties but they also did a lot of damage so all in all very good yeah just everyone doing their, their thing archer spearmen the thought nobles the sindar just leading the pack which we would expect of course so yeah all in all good battle nothing out of the ordinary clean win but a clean win with uh, massive consequences absolutely massive maybe that completely cancels their uh, umbar invasion on Mythland, I'm not sure. I might. I mean, the faction is still alive, so probably not, but perhaps it's like a, a requirement that they need to hold the Black Haven or something. I do not know. The Numenorian king is dead. Ah, it used to be the the Haven master of the Corsair, something like that, so they did change that. Well, what a great moment, and you're all witnessing it live with me. Well, not live, but you're all witnessing with me. Exterminate the populace because it's already going to be tricky enough to hold on to Umba. We have Umba. We control Umba. Look at this big blue spot all the way at the bottom. Manwe, conqueror of Umba. Well, I say we shouldn't wait around too long. Let's get a spy and immediately get a bearing of our surroundings. Kingsman, let us get. Uh, Ah, uh, did that destroy the Black Haven? Fuck, I think it did. Uh, ruins of the Pillar. I guess we need to repair it? Let's take a look at the building riser. I might have done something wrong. People will hate me. Sea trade. Docklands? No, that's not what I need. Ah, the Haven. I can get that. I'm one of the few factions that can. I think. I think I can build it here, yeah. Umba. It's one of the two places you can get it. Maybe Pilargit as well. Um, Alright, so let us get our culture. Spread our elvish influence by having nice pictures on walls. Nice. So I don't think he'll try anything. Oh, look, a merchant. <laughs> I bet you don't. I just took your capital. So let's continue crushing Umba the next couple turns, but for right now I'm going to call it quits, but we will, of course, toggle the fog of war at the end of this episode. Take a look at how all the other factions are doing. So we are looking mighty strong. We crushed the Goblins of Moria, our main enemy. Maithelberg did fall indeed to the Anwin I'm not sure what they are planning on doing. We are allies though, so it's not going to attack me. The Orcs of Gundabad are not looking too healthy. They are being completely destroyed by the Dwarves. So they are soon to fall. Angmar is also dropping. And if we look at Isengard. Isengard is still alive, but not by a whole lot. Gondor is doing well to hold against Mordor. They don't need to win. They just need to... Oh, the Witch King's there. Look at him. Look at him. 
he gets Temple Knights, so he's also one of those cavalry units that gets, uh, uh, general units that gets a cavalry, but they're not lances, they're just melee cavalry. They are going to lose Kalanad, however, but they might reclaim Karandros. Talamrat's also holding on. They did lose Gobble Torfalus, but they are still holding on to Barad Han. I mean, Gondor is. And I think they also lost Tirethrid, because I think uh, Dolamroth held it. We look at all this spam. The other name are, of course, pretty big, but we are going to use Spice to check on that. Don't want to cheat. Uh, the Underwife are also doing very well. Dunland is getting crushed. So I think our priority right now is to deal with the other name down south, sending in our troops that we brought over. Crush the invasion, if it's still happening. I don't see any ships nearby, but... Never know, never know, never know. But we can hold on to Mithlon pretty easily. These guys are coming over. Um, uh, look towards Angmar. If we can take a couple territories of them before the Zunadine and the Eredlun dwarves beat them back, that would be nice. And it seems like evil is losing out hardcore. We will defeat Sauron by dropping the ring into Mount Doom. So we are allied with most factions. We should be able to arrange safe passage through their lands. Are we allied with Rohan? Probably are. Yep. So then we could either go through Moranon or Minas Morgul, Kiridongul. Probably Moranon. The Black Gate would be easier to take, I think. And walk straight up to Baradur. Where is Mount Doom? It's somewhere over here. Actually, where is that bloody volcano? Oh, there it is. <laughs> How was I so blind? Drop the ring in there, which you do need to hold Baradur for, and then Mordor is done, and Isengard will soon fall, and the campaign's already a win. So in less than a hundred turns, we have achieved a conquest of Umbar, the destruction of the goblins of Moria, and the control of the One Ring. I'd say that is a resounding success, and I want to thank you all for being part of this journey so far. Alright, with that said, that is the end of this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I um, look forward to all your comments, and of course, I will see you next time. Bye-bye!